Welcome back to Economic Tutorials. We're working through our first chapter here with introductions to microeconomics. We're up to the point where we're going to talk a little bit more about Adam Smith, who we said was the first academic economist. Um, and he wrote this book called An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations. And if you want a good book to help you get over your insomnia, hard time sleeping, that book might work fairly well for you, unless you're very interested in it. But at the time, it was a very controversial book. It was the sort of book that you kind of write with a little bit of fear and trembling, because it was a poke in the eye to the political establishment. And what I mean by that is he was writing against an economic concept called mercantilism. Mercantilism. What do I mean by mercantilism? Well, we got country A here, and we've got country B. And how do we know which country is wealthier? Well, if we stop time and we count up all the gold coins in country A, we'd say, well, that's how many gold coins they're worth. Or country B, we add up how many gold coins are in that country. And so if we taxed 1% of this country, we wouldn't get very much revenue. But if we taxed 1% of this country, we'd get a lot of revenue. So the kings, of course, wanted a very prosperous economy. Adam Smith's book again, The Wealth of Nations, How Do Nations Get Wealthier? He was writing about that. And the prevailing doctrine at the time was this doctrine of mercantilism. And under mercantilism, the king wanted to have the wealthiest empire compared to everybody else, which means he wanted to have more money in his kingdom than in everybody else's. So how does this work? Well, let's say that there are two nations here. One nation is very good at producing wool. Advantage there, the terrain, the climate. But another country is lousy at producing wool, but they're awfully good at producing wine. So, back in this era, in the Middle Ages leading up to the 1700s, there were kind of a limit on what occupations people could have. Um, they could be a squire or a knight or something like that, or they could be a, uh, they could work the land as a serf. A person who doesn't own the land, but can own the produce of the land as long as they pay a fair share of their income to the lord of the manor, um, or the clergy, or there's one other occupation of being a merchant. A merchant is not someone who definitely or, or absolutely grows something. He's not a member of the clergy or the church. He's not part of the upper class of the elite lords of the manor. What he does is he has a buckboard and two mules, and he happens to live over here where there's a lot of wine, but they don't have very much wool. So he takes what earnings he has, and he converts it into wine, and he travels over here, and he sells the wine in exchange for wool. Wine's pretty plentiful over here, pretty cheap. Wine's pretty expensive over here. So he takes this cheap good and takes it over to where it's very expensive. And he buys something that's very, very inexpensive, wool, and he comes back and he sells it where it's very expensive, making money coming and going. So he brings the wine this way, and if he sells it over here, he could bring, if he wanted to, he could bring the money back, or he could bring the wool back and sell it for money. So those nations that export, I should say, he should have the wine here, because he's exporting the wine, but importing the money, and exports make more coins pile up in the exporting country. So every king loves exports, but they don't like imports. Now similarly, the people over here, they make very good wool. These people don't. So they would take their wool, ship it over here in exchange for wine or the money and take the money back home again. Let's stick with these people with wine. They make very good wine. The people over here enjoy the wine. But there are some folks over here that are in the wine business. It's not very good wine, but they, they 
they try hard, and it's passable, and they're seeing all this wine coming in, and it's in competition with their own winemaking. And so, for the good of the people, they go to the king, and they have a proposal. Hey, king, um, you want to make more money for your kingdom, right? Right. And you care about the welfare of your people, right? Right. And you don't want to see them get ripped off with cheap, shoddy merchandise, do you? Of course not. Well, do you know that there's some people who are bringing in wine, but before they come into the country, they go by the creek, and they pour, they got... 75% wine, but the other 25% they put in water. And they're actually watering down their wine, and they're coming over here and selling it as pure wine. And they're ripping off these citizens. They're so dumb, they can't tell the difference. And we don't think that's right, that they should be able to come in here. They're foreigners, after all. Shouldn't we protect our own wine-producing business? Even though we're not a big wine producer, we still produce some. And we think that we should not allow our neighbors to be ripped off with bad wine coming in from foreign countries. Well, yeah, that, that sounds right. They, they shouldn't do that. Those are bad people doing that. I know they're bad people, but we don't think that, well, King, you know what? You could protect the citizens if you would have these foreigners come over and they would check in with our guild we would sample it. If it's good, we'll put our seal of approval on it. We're not against competition. We just don't want people to do bad things. We'll put our seal of approval on it, and then they can sell their wine over here like everybody else, and we would protect our citizens. Don't you think that's a good idea, King? Well, I don't know. I, I, who's going to enforce that? I mean, my, what, my knights? You're going to have my knights? Do, oh, well, yeah, of course. Uh, we but we're going to collect a fee when we certify it, and some of that fee will go to pay for your knights, and so you won't have to pay for the knights protecting the country all out of your own pocket. Part of our helping the customers, helping the poor people in our country to get good wine, that will help pay for your, your knights. Oh, so it's going to keep my people from being ripped off, and it's going to help pay for my knights at the same time? That sounds like a really good idea. Let's turn that into a law. Okay, so they come in and we're now going to tax this wine to certify this wine before it can be sold in here, or they're going to take them off to the high tower and imprison them. So when we have wine coming in, all of a sudden it's going to be taxed now, and these wine producers are not going to be able to have the freedom to sell their wine to whomever they want, whenever they want, however they want. They have to go get the blessing of the local wine guild because the king said so. Now we're beginning to understand this concept called mercantilism. Mercantilism, the regulation of international trade. But these people over here think, hey, you know, they're taxing our wine. They're, the wool they send us is pretty good, but some of it's pretty crummy. It's not always as clean as it should be, and some of it's a little smelly. So we think that although we don't have much of a wool industry over here, that when they bring wool into our country, we're going to have to tax it, regulate it, certify it's okay, so our citizens over here don't get ripped off by these people who are bringing wool into our country. Don't you think, King, that we should protect people from, who don't know good wool when they see it to make sure it goes through our guild? Well, of course. Now, what's happening here is now we don't have the freedom of the merchants to sell wherever they want to whomever they want. And if you're going to tax our wine and regulate our wine, then we're going to tax your wool and your, regulate your wool. And the tax is going to go help the king as well. Well, these people like exports, but these people are putting up regulations. And these people love exports, but these people are putting up regulations. And we can tax this business to a standstill. Not only was this sort of regulation of the market internationally between two countries, but the wool guild and the wine guild were now going to the king and say, well, you've got to enforce some of our own members because some of our own members are doing the same thing as these bad people from other countries, and we're telling them to stop, but they won't stop, so we want your knight to go over there and get them, beat on them, or take money from them, or put them in prison or whatever, because they, they're selling bad stuff that don't live up to our standards. Into this mess up, into this tit for tat, I'll tax your stuff, you tax my stuff, etc. 
People were not allowed to sell what they want, to whom they want, at whatever price they want, at whatever risk they wanted to take. Because the government, the king, now says who is allowed to trade with whom. Along comes Adam Smith. And he says, you know this mercantilism idea? How it's intended to help exports, 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 but hinder imports? You know, King, you ought to do yourself a favor and get out of this business altogether. Just completely get rid of the mercantilism idea of trying to make your nation wealthier by making regulations. Now, I'd submit to you that it is a dangerous thing, often, to be right when the government is wrong. And to write a book to say that the political order, meaning the king, is boneheaded, wrong, in error, to regulate mercantile trade was a fairly dangerous thing to do. But that's what Adam Smith did. That's what that book, or a large portion of that book, was all about. It was all about that idea that the nation that has the greatest amount of economic freedom will become the wealthiest nation, all other things being equal. And that was the message of Adam Smith. Freedom works. Give people liberty. Allow them the freedom to take their own risk. And if they want to buy bad wine, they have the freedom to buy bad wine. And they can buy from anybody they choose, whenever they choose, however they choose. So I, I would argue that although this book is fairly boring reading for us today, at that point in time, it was very controversial. And it's still controversial to tell the government no, you should just get out of our life and let us make our own economic decisions. To that point, we're talking about issues that didn't happen back here in 1776 before. They're the same issues that we're debating today in our economy.